till now we have seen all the bones which are in the axial skeleton we have seen the bones in the skull region including cranial and facial bones we have also talked of vertebral column all different types of vertebrae sternum that is breastbone and ribs rib cage now we will see the same bones using the model so that we understand the attachment and the exact location of all these bones this is the model of the human skeleton and using this we will go over all the bones of the axial skeleton which we have already seen we will start with this part that is the skull region. Now in the skull region we talked of the bones which are in this upper part that is the cranial region and the front part which is the facial region. So let us see the bones of the cranium. The front bone this which makes the forehead is the frontal. On two sides that means on this side and here these are the occipital bones. On the side where the ear is, this is the temporal bone and on the back side there is single occipital. So single occipital, two temporal, two uh, parietal and one frontal bone. There are two more bones in the cranial region that is sphenoid and ethmoid which are in the orbit part which are not visible to us from outside. Now coming to the facial region. In the facial region, some bones are visible in the skeleton, but some are hidden inside. This lower one, this is the lower jaw that is mandible. And this is the only movable bone in the skull region because the joint is a movable joint. All other joints are immovable. This is mandible, the lower jaw. The upper jaw is made up of two maxillae, one on each side. This bone which is visible, these are the cheekbones or zygomatic. The nose part, this is the bony part of the nose which is visible. Here we can see these two triangular bones. One is here, one on the other side. These are the nasal bones. The vomer is inside. So again, not visible to us. Palatine bones are in the palate region, that is in the buccal cavity inside. So roof of the buccal cavity would have these two palatine which are inside. Second, the bone which is not visible is the terminal bone, that is the ones which are in the nasal chamber. Then here there are two lacrimal, again in the orbit part. So this entire thing makes the skull and hyoid bone is below this region which is the tongue bone. So this makes the skull region including cranium, facial bones and the ear ossicles which are inside the middle ear. Again, not visible to us from outside. Now let us come to the second part. The next part of the axial skeleton is this vertebral column which is running from just the lower side of the skull and it goes up to the tailbone that is coccyx. Let us see these different parts. The first ring-like structure which is visible just beneath the head region which I'm moving, this is the first cervical vertebra that is the atlas. This one is the second one that is axis and these are the cervical vertebrae that is in the neck region. And we know that our vertebral column has curves. There are two curves which are directed, the curvature is towards the anterior and posterior side. Let us see. In the cervical region, it is on the posterior side and in the lumbar region, it is on the posterior side. It's this curvature we are talking of. Whereas in the thoracic region and in the sacral region, the curve is on the anterior side. The curve of the lumbar region helps us stand upright. So this is responsible for our erect posture. Now coming to the cervical vertebrae, the first one is atlas which holds the complete weight of the skull. This one which I am pointing at, this is axis and if you can see, atlas is not having the neural spine whereas axis has. This is third, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh. This is the seventh cervical vertebra. So these are seven cervical vertebrae and we said the first, second and seventh are atypical and all others are pretty much same in shape. Now from here starts the thoracic region. So this is first and it goes up to 12. And you can see the first thoracic vertebra, the first pair of rib is attached here. So this is one rib, this is the other one. 
it is attached here. Yeah. So this is first thoracic, second, second rib is attached, third, this is third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. This is the twelfth. And these have their neural spines directed downwards. So neural spines are going little down. This is the thoracic region. Now comes the lumbar part. In the lumbar, as you can see, the vertebrae are very strong, stout, and big in size. And if you compare the neural spine, in the thoracic region, the spine is pointing downward. Whereas in case of lumbar vertebrae, it is flat and it is pointing backward. And these are the lumbar. The one, two, three, four, and five. These five are the lumbar vertebrae. First, second, third, fourth and fifth. Transverse processes are also very big and flat. Neural spine is also very big and flat so that the muscles can attach to it. Now coming to the lower part, this part is the sacral vertebrae. There are five vertebrae which have fused to form the sacral part. One, two, three, four pairs of openings are visible. These are the sacral foramen. And we can see that the neural spines of all these vertebrae have fused to form a median crest-like structure. And this last pointy bone which is here, this is the caudal bone or which we commonly know as the tailbone. This is formed, this small pointy triangular piece is formed by the fusion of four caudal vertebrae. So four have fused to form this. Five have fused to form the sacrum. There are five in the lumbar region, 12 in the thoracic region, and seven in the cervical region. So there are 26 pieces which are visible to us. Let us now talk about the next part. This bone which is visible to us in the front part, this is sternum. And sternum, as we have seen, it has three parts. The broad upper part is prosternum. This middle part is known as the mesosternum or the body and this smaller part which is cartilaginous is the xiphi sternum because it has xiphoid cartilage. So prosternum, mesosternum and metasternum and it is a flat bone which is present on the ventral side of the body. It also makes a part of the axial skeleton and as we can see the ribs are attached to this. Now let us talk about the rib first and then we will take different types of ribs. Each rib is a C-shaped structure. Anteriorly it is attached to sternum and it goes back and posteriorly it is attached to the thoracic vertebrae. So anteriorly to sternum and posteriorly to vertebral column. Now let us count these ribs. The first pair, we said the first pair is attached to the prosternum and then the remaining few are attached to the meso one. So this is pro, the first, sorry, the first one attached to pro, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh. These seven are attached to the sternal part and these are the true ribs. Here, this part has been colored or highlighted as red. This is the cartilaginous part. That means the part of the rib which is attached to the sternum is cartilaginous. And this red part is a coastal cartilage. So it is cartilaginous which is towards the sternum and the part which is towards the vertebral column is the bony part. Now, again we'll count the first few. The first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh. Seven ribs are attached directly to the sternum. So they are known as sternovertebral ribs because anteriorly they are attached to sternum and posteriorly they are attached to the first seven thoracic vertebrae. Coming to these, one, two and three, this is eighth, ninth and tenth. These are attached to the seventh one. If we look at this, this is the seventh rib, eighth, ninth and tenth. They are attached to the seventh vertebra. So they are not directly attached to the sternum. Instead, they are attached to the cartilaginous part of the seventh. So these three, that is eighth, ninth and tenth, they are called false ribs. Now coming to the last two, this one and this. 
posteriorly they are attached to the backbone or vertebral column but anteriorly they are free so these two that is 11th and 12th they are known as floating ribs so this complete is the rib now when we talk of rib cage rib cage means only this much part which is covered from all four sides front is also covered sides as well as the back and that is sternum first seven that is true ribs and the first seven a thoracic vertebrae the false ribs and the floating ribs are not a part of rib cage because here it is open the cage has to be covered from all four sides so this is the rib cage and these are all different types of ribs so these are various bones of our axial skeleton